Hey everyone, Aiden here with another comic book review. Today I am reviewing Frank Miller's 1986 classic, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Without a doubt, this is my favorite Batman story ever written. I've mentioned this story before in other videos, and I've done some of Frank Miller's other work, such as Daredevil Born Again and Batman Year One. I will put links in this video for those. And um, all in all, this is just an amazing Batman story. It uh, came out at a time when people still thought of the Adam West TV show from the 1960s when they thought of Batman. And mind you, that was an amazing show. I loved it growing up. But one thing about it was that it was too lighthearted and child-oriented, but that was the point of it. Whereas this is a more adult graphic novel, hence the name graphic novel, not just for the drawings inside, but also because of its tone and themes within it. And um, many people will tell you that this is their favorite book, and it's the greatest Batman story ever, and I'm one of the people who appreciate it for not only its writing and its artwork, both done by Frank Miller, but also because of its themes about um, uh, coming out of your shell to do good, and um, it's also a critique on the politics of the time. This was when Ronald Reagan was president of the United States, and he's featured in this. And uh, it talks about the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. And um, there's actually a fight between Superman and Soviet soldiers in this. And speaking of Superman, he is essentially a pawn of Reagan in this story. Um, He's really at the president's beck and call, and many Superman fans, such as myself, have not really enjoyed this take on the character, but it works within this alternate universe which Frank Miller has created. And speaking of which, this was the first entry into DC's Earth-31, which is an alternate universe in which all of his Batman stories take place, except for Batman Year One. That takes place in both Earth-31 and Earth-1, which is the main continuity in which the heroes that we regularly rarely read about have their adventures, and those are the adventures that we read about. And um, showing you some of this art, it's uh, very good from my perspective, but other people don't like it because it's different from some of the cleaner uh, images that we've seen, but, you know, here's just a panel Batman fighting a guy in a mud pit, which is one of the most iconic scenes, and I didn't really give it much justice when I just mentioned it, but... It is well drawn and well written, which is one of the many reasons why I love this book. Now, this is called the story that brought Batman dark, back to his dark roots of the 30s and 40s, but that's not entirely true. In the 1970s, writer Dennis O'Neill and artist Neil Adams did a phenomenal run on Batman. They revolutionized the character by bringing him back to his dark roots from the 30s and 40s, because th that was coming off of the Silver Age of comics where it was all like, golly gee, and you know, all that silly shenanigans that happened. But then Adams and O'Neill come along and they're like, okay, scratch that. This is how Batman should be, and this is how he should act and look and all that good stuff. And um, this... Going into the story, it's really hard to explain without spoiling, and many people have explained it before me, but I'll, I will try and do it justice. 
So, Bruce Wayne has been retired from being Batman for 10 years now. It's the 1980s in this universe and in the time it was written. So, it's the 1980s, Bruce Wayne is 55 years old and he's stopped being Batman. And uh, crime has gone up, apathy has gone up, no one is willing to protect the city of Gotham except for James Gordon who is close to retiring from being commissioner. Now as I said before, Superman is a pawn of the United States government and he, he is the only active superhero. The heroes like Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, they all quit and left. Wonder Woman back, went back home to Paradise Island. Green Lantern left Earth and Flash went into hiding and all the other heroes went into hiding. And the only other superhero who shows up besides Superman is Green Arrow. I'll get back to that later. But Bruce Wayne, he's walking around the city and he sees that it's declined. It's worse than it's ever been. And he's like, that's it, I gotta be Batman again. And so he shaves his mustache because he had a big bushy gray mustache. And so he shaves his mustache, he puts on his suit, and he goes out that night and he just starts beating the crap out of bad guys. Like, there's this guy who tries to rape this woman, he just shatters every bone in that man's body. There are these, uh, there's this police chase, the, the cops are chasing down this car that just robbed the bank. And, um, Batman's like, oh, I gotta catch them. And then he just beats the living shit out of them. And it turns out that they were working for Two-Face, one of Batman's oldest foes. Now, Two-Face was a man named Harvey Dent, and he was the district attorney of Gotham City. And in a courtroom, he'd be the one to prosecute the criminals, or the alleged criminals. But in Gotham City, they're all criminals. So he was the district attorney, but then acid was splashed on half of his face and it fractured his psyche he went nuts and um, he started becoming this villain named Two-Face now these bad guys they were working for Two-Face and uh, recently his face was fixed by a plastic surgeon and a psychiatrist claims to have cured him and for the most part that's true and um, but it turns out that he just went nuttier from all of this therapy and he thinks that both of his both sides of his face are horribly disfigured like the one one side at once was and so he's just committing crimes again and then Batman stuff and there's this other gang called the mutants which are these teenagers there are these teenagers and uh, I'm sorry my dog is making a lot of noise now, these teenagers calling themselves the mutants, they are just vicious. They kill people, they rape people, they steal from people without prejudice, and they're just like, eh, let's be hoodlums. And so Batman has to take them down, and he fights their leader, and, he, and the leader leaves Batman just broken. He breaks Batman's arm, he like cuts him up a bit, and he's like, ugh! And the, that is when we meet this girl named Carrie Kelly. She's 13 years old and she's neglected by her parents. Now Carrie, she bought a Robin costume from a costume store and she starts helping people out around her neighborhood. And then she is happening by the place where Batman's fighting the, the mutant leader and she's like, oh my gosh, I gotta help him. It's Batman. And she's wearing her Robin costume, and he's like, Thanks, I'm Batman, by the way. And she says, Hey, I'm Carrie, but you can call me Robin. And they go back to the Batcave. Alfred fixes him up, as he usually does. And um, we find out that Jason Todd, who was the second Robin, has died. Now, this was before 
A Death in the Family came out. And A Death in the Family is where Jason Todd died in the regular continuity. He was murdered by the Joker. And, um, so he, reluctantly Bruce takes Carrie on as the third Robin. And, uh, this was the first time that Robin was a girl. And, uh, she was very good as Robin. She proved herself, herself worthy of the name. And so they dismantle the mutants together, and then the Joker appears. Now, he has been catatonic for the past ten years because it is heavily implied that he was the one who killed Robin. And then when Batman went into retirement, the Joker is, like, catatonic. And when Batman Reese urges Joker like, hey, Batman's back. Because Frank Miller's version of the Joker, only Batman can make him smile. He never smiles unless he sees or hears of Batman. So he hears about Batman, he's like, hey, he's back. And he starts smiling again. And then uh, the Joker causes so much mischief, he uh, kills a few hundred people in the story, and it is insane. It's nasty how much, how many people he's killed and the ways in which he does it. And uh, so he goes to the carnival to try and kill all these kids. And then Batman and Robin go there. And Batman's like, that's it. You're dead. And then he just, he snaps the Joker's neck. And the Joker is paralyzed, but not dead yet. And so he's like, ugh, you know. The cops are going to go after you for doing this. And Batman's like, shut up. And then the Joker's like, well, see you in hell. Then he starts laughing maniacally like he's never laughed before. And then he just twists his own neck, finally killing himself and putting the blame on Batman. And then the police are like, okay, well, we got to go, go after Batman. And mind you, Commissioner Gordon has retired and this younger woman has become the new police commissioner. And uh, she she doesn't like Batman, not one bit. And um, though she did respect Gordon, so she's like, you know what, I'll hold off for a bit. But then when he kills the Joker, she's like, okay, all the cops are going after him now. And um, I'm sorry that I'm telling you the whole story, but it's just so good. I mean, I'm leaving things out so that you can go in and read it and get the whole story, but I'm just giving you a synopsis here. So, the new commissioner sends all the cops after Batman. And then, um, he beats them up. And then Reagan says to Superman, Okay, you gotta deal with this Batman guy. I mean, he's causing up quite the ruckus, and I need you to go set him straight. And... Superman's like, yes, sir. And he goes to Gotham City, and he's like, you know, you gotta stop this. And then he's like, no. And so Superman flies away. And then um, he asks Bruce, like, where? And then Batman says, meet me downtown. And then, um, then Batman and Robin go downtown, and Robin keeps people away. And Batman and Superman just duke it out. It is amazing. Batman versus Superman. This was the fight that people had been waiting to see since 1938. Well, 39. This is the fight people have been waiting to see since 1939, when both Batman and Superman had already come out. And, um... They were like, okay, yeah, Batman versus Superman. And it is one of the most amazing fights. I will show you some of the artwork from that. Here we go. Here's one of the most iconic images from the book. Bam! Batman in a mech suit, punching Superman, just like, boom! And, um, I'm not going to tell you who wins the fight, because I don't want to spoil that for you, but... I'm guessing that you can guess who wins. That's all I'll say. And then, that's the end of the story. And 
it was just so great. I mean, Batman is at his best in this, and his villains are at his worst, meaning, you know, they're more evil. And, um, all around, I just highly recommend Batman The Dark Knight Returns. It is a masterpiece. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate any feedback whatsoever, and good day.